Okay, now we should finish uh, numbers. So let's get started. Put my glasses on. So we're on 25 and let me get this ribbon out of the way. Um, and this is the worship of Baal of Peor. Most people know a little bit about this. Um, first, Jeff Cavins parallels Baal with, and he pairs it with the golden calf. You remember all that. Um, he says both have idolatry and both have sexual immorality. Okay. And in this place called Chittim, they were sacrificing gods and bowed down to gods. The Israelites became friends with these people. And the Lord was furious and told Moses to go and hang the chiefs of each people and hang them in the sun before I turn against all of them, he told them. Moses said, he told them, everyone, every one of you better slay the men who have yoked themselves to Baal of Peor. This is interesting language. One of the sons of Israel, um, okay. Where are we? Let me move down. All right. One of the sons of Israel brought a Midian woman to his family, and they were weeping at the front of the tent, meaning the front of the tent means the church. And El Eleazar, who took the place of Aaron, remember, as the highest priest, well, his son, um, I forget his name, but we'll, we'll, t we'll talk more about him in a little bit further, um, his son saw them weeping at the front door of the church. So, darn it. Um, and he rose, let the congregation, left the congregation, took a, um, a spear in his hand and went to the man and the woman and pierced both of them through their body, killed them. And then it said um, the plague was stayed from the sons of Israel. But, so that means that this caused a plague. Nevertheless, those that died by the plague were 24,000. So, evidently, oh, his name was uh, uh, Feinhas. So evidently, it sounds like it was some kind of sexual relationship that caused a disease. And it was contagious some way. I don't know if it was from sexual or what, but 24,000 people died. Um, I don't know if they were all infected by, the sec by sexual behavior um, or what, but that's what it sounds like. So then God told um, Moses... Um, and the Lord said to Moses, Finehas, the son of Elizar, son of Aaron, the priest, has turned back my wrath from the sons of Israel, in that he was jealous with my jealousy among them, so that I did not consume the sons of Israel in my jealousy, because he saved them. Therefore, Behold, I give him my covenant of peace, and it shall be to him and his descendants after him a covenant of perpetual priesthood, because he was jealous for his God and made atonement for the sons of Israel. I thought that was beautiful. Um, and, okay, so apparently this woman was part of the Simonite, Simonites, um, who we're going to hear more about in the book of Judges, apparently. Um, that's the next biblical period. And apparently there's something big with them because the Lord tells Moses to harass the Midianites and strike them because they harassed and beguiled you and your people. It sounds like seduced at that time. They said beguiled. So I think that means seduced. <laughs> which I like that word and now I'm not so sure um and the end and it and that ends abruptly so I'm gonna look more into that because that makes me curious into this whole area here I mean you know this this part here um 
Okay. So, um, the Simonites, I should have said. Um, okay, so number 26. Another census of Israel is called. So they go through another census with all the numbers. Um, and then, let me turn this page. It's just all names and all that. And then, um, towards the end, 2652, where is that? 2652. Okay. So then the others are just all, the, the, this is all just literally all just names and that kind of stuff. Um, so then um, the, the Lord says, um, we're going to divide up the inheritance in large tribes. Uh, large tribes get large inheritance, small get small, and that kind of stuff. And it mentions the Levites, and they're not numbered among the sons of Israel because there's no inheritance um, given. Um, they were the ones that help the priests um, and they get tithes, but they get no inheritance. So um, that's that was they were told that from the beginning. So, OK. Um, and then um, then at the very end here, here, um, it says Moses and Aaron are not among them. They died in the wilderness. Well, Moses didn't die yet in the story, but um, but Aaron did, and he's going to. Uh, Moses will be cast aside. He already knows that. Um, and the only ones of the older generations of the sons of Israel that get there are going to be that, you know, these are the older generations who left Egypt of Jacob's family that were still alive. They're the only ones that are there you know they're not going to be there they're going to be dead by the time that G that god lets them into the promised land so the only ones that would be going will be J caleb and joshua and it talks about who their fathers were okay so now um what that told me these, first of all, these were not by chance that the Lord made these decisions. And you know, because you went along in the story, if you listened. Um, these are because of the actions that they took. Uh, the gate is narrow. Even after all they had done to build the Lord's kingdom, still, the gate is narrow. And we we learned that in the, I think it was Matthew 7.14, was it? Anyway. Um, note to self, get to confession and pray to God I get in that gate. That's just my little note to my little self. Okay, so Numbers 27, the daughters of Zeb Fedahed, Zello Fedahed. These names are difficult. Um, one of jo Joseph's ancestors, and they go through the names of genealogy and finally to the daughter of who had not gone against um, the Lord with Korah. Remember the group? They all got buried in the big hole. So anyway, they say to our father, they say our father had, they tell Moses, our father had no sons and we want to inherit our father's right to the land. So Moses um, brings the case, brought the case before the Lord and the Lord said they should get the inheritance. Whoops. Where are we? They should get the inheritance of their father. Um, of a man who has no son, his daughter should get it. And then it goes into some other inheritance stuff. But apparently the Lord wanted the family to get the inheritance through the women. So that was interesting. Um, Joshua appoints a Moses successor. But not fully. I mean, eventually fully, but he's still going to be helping sometime here. So, let me get back to that. Okay. So, the Lord says, go up the mountain, look at the promised land, because um, you rebuild in the wilderness. Um, because of she, he rebelled in the wilderness during the strife of the congregation, you won't enter the promised land. So that's when he 
cut him. That's it. And Moses spoke very graciously, which was like, wow. Um, and the Lord told him, take Joshua and lay your hand upon him. And before you ha it has to be done in the, in, um, the priest Eleazar, who was Aaron's son, if you remember, and all the congregation, and you shall commission, commission him in, his, in their sight. Um, and you shall give him some of your authority so that the congregation um, will respect him. And you continue to, to invest in him with some of your authority so that all the congregation sons of Israel may obey. So apparently the Lord has more work for Moses to do. So, 28, daily offerings. It just goes into very detailed, though. It's not nothing little to the Lord. Um, very detailed the way he likes his offerings. The Sabbath offerings, he goes into specific detail for that sacred day. Um, and I just want to note here that um, I've been saying um, Sunday in the past, previous videos um, instead of the Sabbath. Of course, we know Sunday didn't become the glorious day until Christ rose, but it was the seventh day that he said they rested. So I just wanted to clear that up. Monthly offerings. In this one again, very specific, but talk. But this one talks about sin, a sin offering. So I'm wondering um, if they were supposed to have a monthly confession. I don't know. It's not real clear, but uh, that's what I draw from it. So offerings at Passover has some things also very specific about sin and atonement, um, and specific instructions about the seven days and those kind of things. Offerings, the Feast of Weeks, again, specific instructions. The Feast of Trumpets, again, the Lord gives very specific instructions and when to use that trumpet for offerings. <coughs> um, and then the Day of Atonement, very specific. Um, uh, the Feast of Booths, again, very specific. That's what all this is. Okay, it's all of it. Very, very, and the Lord wants it. It's a beautiful thing. It's, it's a good thing. Um, the keeping of the vows. This was basically very specific laws about um, loyalty and relationships. And there's some very old archaic laws that they follow that I'm not going to go into. But if you're interested, you can take a look. Because it's like, wow. Some of it's kind of like, wow. So, um, and then there's more of it there. And then 31. Okay. Sorry, I have to readjust here. Um, so, the war against Midian. The Lord told Moses to execute the Lord's vengeance against Midian. And the Lord told him exactly how many people to send and who to send. And to send the son, the priest of Ezar, uh, Finehas, and the vessels from the sanctuary and the trumpets for the alarm in Finehas's hand. And after the war, after the war, let me turn the page here. The booty, it means whatever they could get from the people, basically robbing them. Um, geez, I didn't know that the Lord went for that, but apparently he does. So I sure have seen how the Lord favors, um, some people and geez, I want to be among them. I always thought, oh, well, the Lord loves everyone. Yeah, he does, but, um, he has his favorites. So, um, return from war. And although I just want to say we're all here to learn specific lessons. So, um, you know, that's okay. So that better be okay because that's the way it is. Um, return from the war. And this is weird. They came to report to Moses and he says, let all the women, you let all the women live. You need to kill all the women except the young girls 
who have not known man let yet, who have not lie, who had not yet been lying with men, and keep them alive for yourselves. Um, wow, yikes. Anyway, then he goes into the pure. They have to purify themselves because they have been in contact with um, dead people because they were killing them. So um, then he goes back to the purification process. And, you know, when you think about it, they didn't know about the germs back then and even disease. Well, I guess they knew a little bit about disease. But um, so their purification process, although it was a religious um, uh, practice, it was really there's some it's based not just in purifying themselves for the Lord, but um, for the earthly realm, too. So. Um, they go into that whole purification process and um, even how to purify the spoils that they brought back. Okay, the division of the booty. And then the Lord tells them to gather everybody and divide the spoils. That, they ha that half has to go to the guys that went out to fight and the other half to the congregation. And then the gold goes to the priest Um who's Aaron's son, remember, and Moses, as kind of a memorial to be kept in the tent or the church. Um, I think I think it said at the altar or something. So, yeah. So, and that's all the stuff. Okay. Okay, so 32. Conquest and division of the Transjordan lands. Okay, so this section is a little bit confusing, but basically the sons of Reuben and Gad come to Moses and they don't seem to want to go to war. And because they're going to, you know, they're fighting all these to get into the lands. They have to, and the Lord told them from the beginning he was going to clear their way, but they still have to fight. Um, so they don't seem to want to go to war. And Moses has a little talking to them. Mo see where it's, it's Moses said to the sons of Gad and the sons of Reuben. So, you know, you might want to read that at some point. Um, and the, and so the, the Lord is also quite angry. And so I'm going to read that part right here. Cause this is important. Um, the Lord's anger was kindled on that day, and he swore, saying, Surely none of the men who came out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me, none except Caleb and Joshua. For they have wholly fought, for they are the only ones that wholly followed the Lord. The Lord's anger was kindled against Israel. He made them wander in the wilderness for 40 years until all the generations that had done evil in the sight of the Lord were consumed. So, um, and behold, you have risen in your father's stead, a brood of sinful men to increase still more the fierce anger of the Lord against Israel. For if you turn away, from following him, he will again abandon you in the wilderness and you will destroy all his people. Um, sort of like the whole tough love thing too. Um, almost like God is talking to his teenage sons um, that are acting, that are older, that are acting immature. So, okay. So, um, then right here, where the star is, um, it sounds like he's doing, uh, you do as you're told and you, you sin, sin against me and be sure your sins will find out. So it says this, the Lord, but if you do not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord and be sure your sins will find you out. I thought that was pretty wow. Um, and then it goes on about inheritance and um, what else? Let's see. And it gets a little confusing here, okay? Um, at first, like, they're not going to get anything. And then some of the sons of Israel. But it's not clear to me. Now, I know that the older ones don't get in. But there's just something more that sounded like it, he was telling the sons, too. So, I don't know. But some of them are not going to get in. Um, number 33. Okay. The stages of Israel's journey from Egypt. Really, it's just a summary of what everything that happened that we've already talked about. It's just more of a summary. So, um, you know, if you want to look into that. 
Um, so let's see. Instructions for the conquest of Can Canaan, which we know as Israel. Um, and the Lord gave specific instructions and told them to destroy all their prefigured stones, um, their molten images, demolish all their high places. Then he briefly talks about their inheritance of the land um, according to size. And he says, you must drive out the inhabitants of the land. Um, anyone who you allow to remain will be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your side, and they shall trouble you. And here comes the threat from the Lord. I will do to you as I thought to do to them. So I was like, whoa, that's big. Wow. Does God take every detail seriously or what? I'm like, wow. So I have learned a lot in reading this. Um, no, no, sweetie. Um, the boundaries of the land of Canaan is, and you know, as we know, Israel. No, no, no. Leave that ribbon alone. She likes to play with, she ruins my cords and everything. Um, boundaries, uh, by now, um, I was confused of who was getting what, but it's all summarized here. Moses commanded the son of Israel and the Lord had commanded to give to the nine tribes. Oh, this ribbon. To the nine tribes. Um, and nine tribes and a half, I guess the ones that were left, um, some details in, um, for some groups and exactly where the land is to start and end per the Lord. So that was interesting. Tribal leaders. Um, then the Lord tells Moses, you're pushing my Bible, Katie, um, that these are the names of the men who shall divide the land for inheritance. Um, Eliezer the priest um, and Joshua. And then he tells him which leaders of the tribes and all those details, which I have over here in a table in my um, breakthrough Bible. So, well, they're the leaders responsible for dividing the land. So that was interesting. Okay, so that's the only thing I'm going to show you from there. So the tribal leaders, we got, uh, oh, and then the Lord tells uh, Moses, these are the name of the men who shall divide. Oh, that's the one I just showed you. Um, and then he tells them which leaders of which tribes and all those details. And he spells it out specifically. He wants it his way. Um, 35. Okay. Uh, the city for the, Le cities for the Levites. All right. And then the Lord goes into the land that the Levites can dwell in. Um, it's not their inheritance, but they can dwell there. Because remember, he said from the beginning, he goes into their animals. And it sounds like a very large area on top of 42 cities for the Levites. Um, and apparently there's many people that probably mot multiplied over those 40 years. So these are all the children of the when it started out from when they left Egypt um, of the Levites. So um, cities of refuge. Now, they, there were no prisons back then. So the Lord said for Moses to make cities for refuge for someone who kills a person without intent, that they may flee to the cities and they can't be killed until they stand before the congregation for judgment. There was no separation of church and state back then. Um, and he gives them six cities for refuge for the sons of Israel, uh, those that kill people. So I guess it's a city of murderers. <laughs> um, hey, don't we have some sanctuary laws that kind of sounds like that? Oy. Um, but we have prisons now. So, um, And the stranger, and it mentions the stranger and the sojourner among them, which I haven't mentioned in the past because I, I kind of left that out, but that's been here all along. Apparently, there's a stranger and a sojourner that's been following along with them. I don't know who they are. It doesn't say, but I, I, it makes me curious. So um, it's been there, but I just haven't mentioned it and because uh, it's kind of been like, oh, I'm still trying to. So but anyway. All right. So concerning murder and revenge. Then the Lord goes into all the ways someone can die, whether it's iron or being stabbed and if there's revenge behind it and if the person laid in wait um, or if it was sudden, all the rules that go with that. He, he really gives the details, okay? Um, and then it goes into witnesses and evidence 
Um, but one sentence that I found kind of interesting was, you shall not dust, pollute the land what you that you live in or wait let me see if i can find it the evidence okay you shall not thus pollute the land and in which in which you shall live for blood pollutes the land and no expiation can be made for the land for the blood that is shed in it except by the blood of him who shed it. You cannot defile the land by which you live in the midst of where which I dwell, the Lord dwells, for the Lord, for I the Lord dwell in the midst of the sons of Israel. That's why everybody wants to go to Israel, right? 36. Concerning married women's inheritance. Then the Lord goes to the inheritance um that was taken before Moses, a repeat a little bit of that. Um, but it also goes in to um, when women marry, they're to marry within the sons of Israel, each other. And it says to let them marry who they think is best, um, but they only shall marry within the family of the tribe of their father. So it's specific about that. Now, um, that explains a lot. Um, for me, because um, first of all, there are a lot of mixtures of uh, in most races, you know, but with Jewish people, and I know this because I have a daughter who's half Ashkenazi Jew, 49% per ancestry, um, and I've learned a lot about it um, because I read a lot. There's a lot of uh, intermarriage and Ashkenazi Jew were actually traced back to, I think, a village of 600. Um, and they are encouraged, just like this says, you know, you shall marry within. That has stuck with them. It's funny how these foundations, I, I wonder what mine were as uh, mostly Irish. Um, okay, so, um, I for, and then there is a group of shep shepherdic, Jews. I forget the difference between them, but there are different groups and, um, but they're all encouraged to marry other Jews. Um, okay. So I just want to say numbers is done. Um, and what I learned, um, basically I learned in the book of numbers a lot, but most of all, I learned that God does not, ex doesn't expect me, uh, to follow his instructions half-heartedly. He is very detailed and he has high standards and all of the half-heartedness going on in our culture for God um, and just making him a Sunday thing, uh, it's not okay. And all the immorality. I can imagine he's pretty angry at us. Um, and personally, I'm going to try to do better. And the fact is that it's very hard, but I I'm going to do that. So that's it for the book of Numbers. Um, I hope I covered everything properly. I did the best I could. Um, I'm getting a little bit better organized, I think, um, in how I'm going to do this. Um, and I just want to add two, two quick things. First, it's not the reading of the book that of numbers that's been hard because I thought, oh, this is easy. It was putting all the documentation for the videos. Um, but it does make it much clearer because I'm trying to clarify for the listener. So it's actually helping me because um, I thought, oh, I should have just done this on my own. But really, this is helping me and I hope it's helping you all. And I want it to help, hopefully, my descendants. I hope this gets saved or somehow. Um, but I have learned from getting this far because it's my responsibility and it's our responsibility to teach our children. And I didn't. So this is my my best attempt I can since the time has passed and I can't go back in time. Um, but anyway, I learned, I've learned from getting this far was the beginning. I thought of this book was a lot easier, but the second half took a lot longer than before because I think I'm getting my method down. So what I learned from that is I had to push myself, um, uh, number one, um, because I was doing this, I'm doing this as a challenge for myself and I'm not sure I'm going to make these 30 days, but I'm praying I get better. Um, but number two is this is a discipline like anything else that's important in your life that you commit to. Um, it's a discipline to decide, okay, I'm going to do this in so many days, whatever. So I hope you 
make a discipline of at least reading parts of the Bible um, in your life and listen and heed these warnings. I wish I had done better more. So I want to say thank you and um, I'll see you in the next period, which I believe is Judges uh, or Kings. So we'll see you then.